Hi guys, here's Truly Heaven Grace reporting to you from Delaney Valley Memorial Cemetery. I'm here to pay my respects to a Baltimore City policeman that was killed um, in a line of duty, but under the mysterious circumstances. As a matter of fact, the case is still... The police said it was a suicide. His family says it was not a suicide. On November the 16th, Detective Sean Souter was killed. Um, happened in the Harlem Park community, and his partner said he saw Sean go in the side alley, uh, and he said the word "police, police," and then there was a, a gunshot. He was shot in the head, and um, the police actually shut down that whole community for about a month and they were looking for a suspect uh, reward got up to $21,000 and no one came forward uh, about a year later the police stated uh, their investigation that it was suicide uh, he was supposed to have talked to the grand jury federal grand jury about a gun task force that he was on he was given limited uh, immunity uh, they did supposedly if there wasn't enough information if he was caught up in the situation but he had information on some of the officers that were corrupt on the gun force uh, it was stemming back to a 2011 incident where uh, a suspect fled um, a crime and was in a fatal accident um, from what they were saying that there were some drugs that were planted on the suspect um, as well so um, just recently, in October 2020, uh, his family was awarded ninety thousand, uh, excuse me, nine hundred thousand dollars. That was a uh, workman's comp situation since he was on duty. But uh, anytime you say there's a suicide, you know, insurances do not pay for that. So they are fighting that, and they said he was in good mood, good spirits, and there's no way that could have happened. And I mean, it's really weird. Uh, like I said, they uh, also had the Maryland State Police as an independent organization go over the records and they came to the conclusion that he was shot with his own uh, his own gun in the head. Um, so it's, it's a really strange situation and it seems like it's something off of one of these movies that you see or a CSI um, episode. But uh, anyway, I want to pay my respects to him he is buried right here in the area of the fallen hero uh, memorial area there's fallen police officers that were killed in the line of duty and also firemen that died um, while they were trying to put up uh, fight fires but he is buried right here and I wanted to share that with you all and there's a nice picture of he and his wife together but uh, stay tuned and you'll find out what, hopefully uh, there's a better ending on this and we'll find out hopefully there's more information about the case of Detective Sean Souter. Feel free to leave any comments down below as well. Reflected on Detective Sean Souter's 18-year career in Baltimore City law enforcement. You're looking live from Chopper 13 at that procession as it winds its way on Interstate 83. It's going up to Pedonia Road and to Delaney Valley Memorial Gardens to his final resting place. Law enforcement from around the world came to pay their respects as Souter's killing remains unsolved. I don't consider this goodbye. I consider it uh, until we meet again, my brother on the other side in paradise. Detective Souter's five children remembered their dad, a fallen hero. Dear Sean, it's me, your oldest, the one you affectionately called show. I'm just writing to let you know that I miss you so much and that I love you for being bigger and better than, than everything I humanly know. 
Souter was an Army veteran, married to Nicole for 13 years. He rose through the ranks over almost two decades in the BPD, remembered for his big smile, easygoing demeanor, and knack for solving tough cases. He is much loved and sorely missed. The overwhelming sadness, anger, and disbelief over such a cruel and senseless loss is still just as strong. I stand here knowing that no words can possibly ease that pain. With heavy hearts, there are also unanswered questions as we look live over the funeral procession. Detective Souter's murder remains unsolved with no named suspect. He was shot in the head with his own weapon while investigating a gang murder in West Baltimore the day he was before he was supposed to testify in a federal police corruption case. There is still a $215,000 reward, but again, uh, so many people came out here to pay their respects. Following the ceremony, hundreds of police cars lined the roads for a funeral procession to Delaney Valley Memorial Gardens, where Souter was laid to rest. On a day like this, we come out to um, honor the sacrifice that they made because um, when we look at what happens to some of the police officers, you know, we, we realize it could, it could be us at any day that we go to work. Baltimore City leaders approve a $900,000 settlement in the Detective Sean Souter case. Council President Brandon Scott approved it under the Maryland Workers' Compensation Act. Detective Souter died while investigating a triple murder case in the Harlem Park neighborhood in 2017. The money will go to his widow, Nicole Souter, and their daughter, Zaria. The family believes it was an inside job, but a state police investigation ruled his death a suicide. His widow spoke a short time ago about the case. I will continue to fight for justice. No amount of money can bring Sean back, and, and most certainly, no amount of money is worth his life. This case should not be swept under the rug. My husband's life nor death will not be ignored. I ask of everyone to continue to say his name, continue to support my family, and continue to spread knowledge that Sean Suter was indeed murdered. Family says they will continue to move forward, pressing for new investigations into Souter's death. Hey guys, here's Trilly Kevin Grace reporting to you from Delaney Valley Memorial Garden Cemetery. I'm here to pay re respects to a fallen officer. This one is different. He was a personal friend of mine. We went to elementary school together. His name, Courtney Brooks. On December the 31st, 2007 at 1120 PM, he was struck by a drunk driver named Carrie King. They believe that the rate of speed that she was traveling in her green Ford Explorer was about 41 miles an hour. They said she just tapped her brakes and kept going. There were some eyewitnesses that saw what happened. They said that Courtney landed about 70 feet uh, on the concrete from the impact. And there was green paint in his uh, belt buckle from that impact. Um, luckily, there was a um, person that followed her through the toll booth and got her license plate and reported it to the police. She left her truck, uh, her vehicle SUV at a truck truck stop, and somehow or another she made it home to um, Elkton, her house. And uh, they said that she had pulled over at a church and looked at the damage, so she knew what was going on. And they said she had called her son at that time, who was 15, and said that she did something really, really bad. But anyway, she was arrested 11 hours later, I think seven hours later. Unfortunately, her uh, breath, uh, Eliza, was, was lower than what it would have been. But anyway, she was actually arrested back on September the 
27th of 2007 for drinking and driving. She did not appear in court and then there was a um, $1,000 warrant uh, place for her arrest and even that day shouldn't even happen she like I said she was age 35 she was working down at the block as a stripper which the block if you're not from Baltimore it's a an area downtown where there's a block full of different strip clubs and it's right by the Baltimore City Police um, headquarters uh, anyway she was intoxicated at, at work they said she had been drinking for like 11 hours that day um, they sent her home because she was falling down and throwing up she went to get her car from the parking garage and the attendant had to pay for her um, her ticket she was throwing up on the machine that you pay for your ticket so he should have called the cops so there were so many different checks that it shouldn't even come to this situation that someone loses their life Courtney was 40 years old and he left behind a three-year-old and a five-year-old and a fiance that they were planning on getting married and he had a, a daughter from his first marriage um, as well but uh, uh, just a really bad situation anyway Carrie King was uh, sentenced to the maximum 10 10 years but um, it shouldn't even have happened but anyway he is buried here at Delaney Valley Memorial Gardens and I, uh, I collected a lot of um, different newspapers at the time and I did go to his viewing at uh, Vaughn Green funeral home in Ramblestown and then I went to his uh, funeral at uh, Mary our Queen Cathedral but yeah this is the newspaper that talked about it and I I've got the uh, brochure as well um, as you can see at the bottom it says God took him home it was his will but in our hearts he lived still remember last time actually seeing him he was uh, like I said, he worked for the Maryland Transportation Authority Police. I did see him at the airport one time when I was flying out. So that was the last time of seeing him. But like I said, he wound up passing away uh, January 1st, a little bit after midnight from his injuries. They had uh, taken him to shock trauma. But uh, this is a situation that could have definitely been avoided. But he's not buried far from the Fallen Hero Memorial sign right there Courtney was given the rank of corporal after his death and also after his death there was a part on I-95 North heading into the city that is named in his honor and his memory so I'm very glad to see that happen as well Where he wound up getting killed was um, I-95 exit 53, and that was near I-395. A cortege that spanned for well over a mile followed the body of fallen MDTA Police Corporal Courtney Brooks from his funeral, Cathedral of Mary Our Queen, to be buried at Delaney Valley Memorial Gardens in Timonium. It was made up of friends, loved ones, and colleagues, and they all gathered to pay their last respects to the officer who was cut down by a hit-and-run driver on New Year's Eve. 11 News reporter Kate Amar was at today's service. She joins us live tonight from the Cathedral of Mary Our Queen in North Baltimore. Kate? From U.S. Marshals to Amtrak police, hundreds of law enforcement officers assembled here at the cathedral today for the funeral service of Corporal Courtney Brooks, killed on the job in a hit and run on New Year's Eve.
Corporal Courtney G. Brooks served his state and his country, an Army veteran who joined the MBTA police force in 1994. Corporal Brooks' last post was with the Commercial Vehicle Safety Unit. His co-workers from that unit served as pallbearers today, and his chief delivered a eulogy which brought nearly 2,000 mourners to their feet. We give standing ovations to pro athletes, musicians, and movie stars. Corporal Courtney Brooks, my standing ovation, our standing ovation is for you, a true hero. The 40-year-old Brooks leaves behind three children and a wedding date, was set to marry Susan Geisler in May. A cousin spoke on her behalf. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. As his fiance and children looked on, the body of Corporal Courtney G. Brooks was carried to a waiting hearse, a final salute for a fallen hero. After the service, Corporal Brooks was laid to rest at Delaney Valley Memorial Gardens this afternoon. An update now on the investigation. According to an MDTA spokesperson, the investigation continues and the woman who owns the suspect vehicle has been arrested, remains in custody in the city jail on an unrelated DUI charge, and as of this evening, had yet to make bail. Hi guys, yours truly, Kevin Grace, reporting to you from Delaney Valley Memorial Garden Cemetery. I'm here to pay my respects to a female officer that was killed at age 29, just a few days before her 30th birthday. Her name, Amy Caprio. She was responding to a call on May the 21st, 2018. It was of a suspicious vehicle with uh, some subject suspects that looked like they were breaking into some homes in Parkville area which was precinct number eight she did encounter that vehicle it was a black Jeep driven by Devonta Harris she told him to get out of the vehicle she had uh, drawn her gun he revved the engine and wound up striking her with the vehicle and he later was caught now the three other kids that were with him that were inside of a house burglar uh, burglarizing it a 16 year old 19 year old and a 17 year old they were charged as adults as well uh just a bad situation devonta harris shouldn't even have been out um on the streets anyway he was given two chances he was under house arrest even his mother didn't want him to be home but the uh court system you know sent him home under uh um, you know home he was supposed to be in home confinement and a couple of times when he left out of his house the agency that surveils that didn't come back to to check because they get an alarm if your bracelet is out of a certain range so it, it was just a bad situation that shouldn't even happen but anyway he was charged as an adult and given a life sentence with a possibility of parole the other kids uh, as well they were charged as adults and they did a plea deal and they were sentenced to life in prison with all but 30 years um, in prison they were sentenced to life but uh, it's just a bad situation but anyway she is buried right here right in front of the fallen heroes memorial sign if you come out and pay your respects she is a graduate of Towson University the same university that I attended The system failed. It's something a lot of people are saying, including the mother of the 16-year-old accused of running over and killing Officer Amy Caprio. I really am truly sorry for this. 
If I could have just found my son, she would still be here and my son would be here with me. Her son, Donta Harris, is accused of stealing four cars and was in and out of community detention centers. While wearing a non-GPS enabled ankle bracelet, he went AWOL until the day Baltimore County police say he ran over Caprio in his stolen Jeep. It's left people looking for someone to blame for these mother's tears and the loss of an officer. Everything changed. His life, my life, the officer life in a split second. And it's just now I feel terrible. The day after Caprio was killed, Sam Abed, the Secretary of Juvenile Services, pointed the finger at Baltimore City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby. Which is why I am more than appalled, disheartened, and perplexed by the Secretary of the Department of Juvenile Services attempt to shift responsibility away from his department by blaming my office and my attorneys for the release of an alleged murderer. Continuing to say the juvenile justice system is broken. Which provides a recurring door for troubled youth to graduate to more severe crimes without the opportunity for appropriate rehabilitation and care. Then 16-year-old Dante Harris questioned for hours after Baltimore County Police Officer Amy Caprio was hit and killed with a stolen Jeep in a Perry Hall neighborhood. Officer Caprio was responding to reports of burglaries in the area. You don't have a clue why you're down here. Not at all. At first, Harris denies ever being in a Jeep. You were driving a Jeep. I'm not even going to debate it with you. It's clear. It's pretty, pretty simple when we have uh, multiple people given independent stories that are all the same. Eyewitness statements and physical evidence. But you were using Ralph's phone? Where does the key come from? It's a Jeep key. A Jeep key falling from the lead detective's chair during the interrogation. When Harris was alone in the room, he's seen messing with the chair, hiding something. Another key piece of evidence, body camera footage from Officer Caprio. Stop! Yes, I did open the door. All right, and then what happened? Um, I was just too scared. Scared, because he says his friends were taking things from random homes in the area. So when he saw the police car, he just wanted to get away. I started pulling a gun towards the car. Okay. And that's when I had put my eyes, put my head down, closed my eyes. No, I didn't even know I hit him. A community says goodbye to a young Baltimore County police officer. Thousands of people attended the funeral of Officer Amy Caprio. She was killed Monday afternoon when she responded to a call for suspicious activity in a Perry Hall neighborhood. A procession carried her body to her final resting place, Delaney Valley Memorial Gardens. First responders and strangers lined the route as the procession went from 95 to 695 to 83 North. <laughs> Bagpipes played Friday morning as officers carried the casket of one of their own. Fallen officer Amy Caprio. The 29-year-old died in the line of duty Monday afternoon after serving for nearly four years. A tragic loss not limited by Baltimore County lines. I mean, it's terrible. And we all work together, so we're a police family. So this hurts us all. A sea of uniforms in all different colors poured into Mountain Christian Church, united in grief and by a thin blue line across their badges, sending a silent message to the family of Officer Caprio. I think they need to feel supported in this time of need. You know, it's definitely, you know, a family throughout everybody with a badge and those without strangers people who never met the young officer like Martha Patrick who came from Forest Hill these are very special bears to bring a small piece of comfort to those who need it most and send the message she can't deliver herself I just my heart goes out to you so new at 11, Baltimore County Police Officer Amy Caprio, killed in the line of duty three years ago, is honored with the Congressional Badge of Bravery. At a virtual ceremony, Senators Ben Cardin and Chris Van Hollen and Congressman Andy Harris joined Friday to present her parents with the award. 
Officer Caprio was killed after she responded to a call for a suspicious vehicle in Parkville. That year, she was nominated for the award, which honors federal, state, local, and tribal officers who demonstrate exceptional acts of bravery in the line of duty, risking serious injury or death.